We serve an awesome God, a real God, a God who cares and a God who's given us everything that we need to live on this planet, everything that we need to overcome and to be successful. But if we're real honest with ourselves, a lot of times we fail. A lot of times we, we sort of mess up and a lot of times we, we wonder where, where, what's up and what's down. But to, today I just pray that God will help us. So Father... Lord, give us an open mind. Open our understanding that we might be able to really, really know what your plan is for our life. Father, that you would give us wisdom beyond our natural ability. Lord, you would reveal the Christ to us. The victory of the cross of Calvary would be ours. And Lord, that we would live victoriously and triumphantly in this earth, and for that we'll give you all the praise. Raise up your church, I pray. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. I'm going to share this morning, contend earnestly. Strange subject perhaps, but why do we need to contend earnestly? Why do we need to contend? Why do we need to do that? What's the answers? How do we break through? I tell you, friends, we need the anointing of a living God. Amen? How many people want the anointing of a living God? Come on, why don't we just put up your hands right now and say, God, I need your anointing over my life. I need your anointing, Father. I need your wisdom. I need your strength. I need your power. I need your leading. I need your guiding. I need the mighty Holy Spirit. I'm just going to build a little bit of a foundation of things I know you know, but just something there if we can lay a foundation. Jesus said in Luke 4.18, He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because God has anointed me to preach, to heal, to deliver. We know those scriptures only so well. The anointing is the impartation of God's power to do and to fulfill the will of God in your life. I need the anointing of God to fulfill what God has for my life. Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He was proclaiming what God was doing in his life. Friend, I want to tell you there's nothing more powerful, there's nothing more exciting than to allow the Spirit of God to get around your life. Let it be touched by the power of God. The Spirit of the Lord, because he has anointed me. The anointing is, everybody say is, the impartation of God's power to do and to fulfill the will of God in your life. The Bible says in the book of Acts 1.8, It says, and you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Just laying a bit of a foundation. The anointing activates the gift in your life. The the anointing stirs something inside of you. You get in the anointing. You get into the presence of God. And I believe that as God starts to pour out His Spirit, even in a greater measure, I, I want to say this, that I don't believe the world has yet experienced the measure that God wants to pour out of His Spirit upon planet Earth. There is this, there is, but there is an expectation in the church right now that God's about to do something big. Amen? God's about to do something big. And, and I believe He's going to pour out His Spirit and it's going to touch us and it's going to activate. It's going to motivate. It's going to do something on the inside of us. I want you to have a look at the book of Jude, if you would, with me. Right at the book, just before Revelation, right at the back of the book, just before Revelation. It says here, Jude, a bondservant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to those who are called, sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ. Mercy, peace, and love be multiplied to you. Beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you, Concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to all the saints. It goes on, it says, for certain men have crept in. And friend, if we're really honest today, things have crept in. The enemy has come in very, very subtly. He is starting to to erode at the very fundamental foundational truths of the Scriptures, our foundation, uh, foundational faith, the things that are, that are so fundamental to us, the reality is, is crept in. 
And, and, and the, the writer here is saying, I, I earnestly, I've got to come to you and I want to tell you to contend. I want to tell you to, to, to hold on uh, to what God has given to you. Contend means to strive to maintain. To strive to maintain. It goes on in verse 20. If you want to read verse 20, it says, speaking in the Holy Spirit, being filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking in the Spirit. That's how we contend. We've got to get into the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. Contend earnestly. Lift your eyes from what you see, whether it be failure, hurt, sorrow, to what can happen in Jesus Christ, victory, freedom, joy. You see, God calls those things which be not as though they were. And so some of the things, faith gets around our hearts and instead of confessing how we feel, we start to speak what God says about us. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. No weapon formed against me can prosper, says God. So if I start to speak that out and start to stir myself up, if I start to contend, to strive, to maintain, to pray in the Spirit, contend earnestly. It says here uh, to preserve. I don't know about you, but I've seen preserved uh, peaches and fruits and different things like that. But to preserve, it says to preserve yourself, to, main, to maintain its original state. Preserved by the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to be kept, I want to be preserved. I want, to, I want, I want somehow or other for God to get around my life to be able to maintain the, the, the presence of God over my life, to be ma- able to maintain, to be preserved by the Lord Jesus, preserved by the Word, to be preserved by the Holy Spirit, by the anointing, by the power of God. Amen. I've got to lift my eyes from what I can see and I've got to start to see in the realm of the Spirit. and I've got to start calling things that be not as though they were. I've got to start speaking into the atmosphere. I've got to make a declaration. I've got to contend earnestly for the faith I've got to contend for what God is doing right now because I want to tell you, as sure as God made little apples, there's an enemy that's going to try to creep into my life. He'll try to creep into your life. He'll try to creep in around your life and he's going to try and sow discord. He's going to try and sow a lie. He's going to try and sow something into your life that'll take you away from the purpose and the plan that God has for your life. And if we're honest enough today, we've got to realize and we've got to confess it that the church is not the church that Jesus Christ wants on this planet. The church is not a social club. A church is the power of God. The church is the presence of God. The church is the, 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 the what's the word, uh, manifestation of God and everything that He's done for us. Do you believe that today? The enemy creeps in and he creeps in, but we've got to contend. God calls us things that do not exist as though they did. That's Romans 4, 17. We, you know, I don't know about you, but I learned to speak from my earthly father. A lot of the words that I learned to speak from him were not nice. But a lot of people from time to time as they see us, they say, you're just like your father. Anybody ever said that to you? Just like your mother or whatever it might be. So... We've learned to speak from our natural father. How much more do we learn to speak from our heavenly father? How much more do we need to learn? And though this is very, very simple, what I'm saying to you today, I believe it is very, very confound, profound. I believe that there's something there that we need to hear today because it's so easy to speak in the natural it's so easy to speak how I feel. It's so easy to speak what's going on around my life and, and get so caught up in the negativity of it. But if, if I can just contend earnestly and rise up against that thing and say, no, I'm not going to speak that way. I'm going to desire right now and I'm going to speak differently. and I'm going to say what God says about me and I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I am more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. I am a child of God. I am not a mistake. I'm not an accident looking for a place to happen. I am a child of God. I am anointed by the Spirit of God. God has got a purpose and a plan for my life, and I'm going to live for Jesus. Amen. But see, to do that, you've got to contend earnestly. 
You got to fight like Roman, Roma had to fight. She had to fight there in mornings there. And I would imagine still mornings when she gets up and that heaviness gets around her, but she's got to somehow or other shake it off. You got to shake it off, amen, and say, I desire today and I choose today. I am a child of God, amen. And I'm not going to allow that thing to get hold of me. If you contend earnestly, you will get the victory. How much more do we need to speak like a heavenly father? Spirit words. Words that carry the anointing. See, words are powerful. Words can carry the anointing. It's amazing sometimes that, that you don't know what you're saying, but sometime later, it might be two weeks or three weeks later, somebody will walk up to you and say, when you spoke to me the other day, and when you said that the other day, something happened on the inside of me. Something triggered on the inside of me. And I started to think differently. And today I'm free because you see your words carry something. They carry the anointing. Do you believe that today? Your words can carry life or death. Your words can also cause death. Your anointed words are containers of power. You know, you speak to yourself more than anybody else speaks to you. That's why you have to contend earnestly. And your words will are containers of life to yourself. If you speak negative, it will destroy you. If you think negative, it will destroy you. But somehow or other, if you can just start speaking what God says, just get all the little bits that are written in red... And use them, amen. Speak the word only, the Bible says, and my servant will be healed. Servant, the words are containers of power. Jesus did it and that man was healed that very hour. Contend earnestly. Follow, go after the carrier of the anointing to the hidden place in him. Go after the carrier. His name is Jesus. Son of grief, no more. Go after the carrier of, of the anointing and you'll find that hidden thing. You'll find that which you're seeking. You'll find that release. You'll find that freedom. You'll find that liberty. You'll find what God has for you. The hidden place in Him. Jesus is the original carrier of the overflowing anointing. If you want the real... Follow Jesus. Don't follow me. Please don't follow me. If you follow Jesus, you will find the deep fellowship and leading of the Holy Spirit. Can you say to me today, you need that leading of the Holy Spirit? Dear Jesus, a man can only take you so far, but the Lord can take you beyond. Beyond, beyond, beyond. I want to go beyond, amen. I, I, want, I, I believe, oh Jesus, I believe that we can soar the dizzy heights. Now Richard Branson, he has discovered, uh, just developed an aircraft that takes a passenger craft so far, then it releases it into the atmosphere and it goes into space. Have you heard about that? Obviously. It can take you so far, but then it goes beyond. Every ministry must have this in mind to see members of the congregation rise up and go deeper and further than ever before. I, I, want, to, I, I want to be part of it, amen. But I want to see you guys, there's young ones, and as he, with this boy there, you know, another 10 years, they will be leaders. But I want to see them go beyond where we are, amen. I want to see them go further and deeper, higher, whatever it might do. Go further than before. Don't ever become codependent on a man. Only be codependent on Jesus, on the Word, on the anointing. Contend earnestly. <laughs> Anybody getting the message? Words are containers of power. In Luke 4, 3, the devil said to Jesus, If you are the Son of God, 
command these stones to become bread. The devil knew that Jesus could do it. Words are powerful. There's a word that's coming forth lately. It's command. And it's not passively speaking to the devil and saying, would you please leave me alone? No, it's, there's a command. There's something that's stirring inside of people. Something there that's rising up and it's got authority and it's got power and it's got anointing and it's got victory. And instead of just passively praying, we just make a declaration against the enemy and against his plan. And we command him. And he said to him, he said, command these stones to become bread. If it wasn't possible, Jesus would have said to the devil, don't be so stupid. That is not possible. You know, Peter saw Jesus walking on the water and he said to, he said to him, he said, bid me come. And he said, come. <laughs> See, words are containers of power. Jesus says, come unto me, all you who are heavy laden. Those words contain life and power. You see, we are not just coming to church and putting your name on the roll. You might as well put your name on a sausage roll because that won't help you. But coming to Jesus, allowing him to touch your life. One of the unfortunate things in life today is that the church has not been a good representation of who Jesus really is. Why would I want to be part of that? Why? Why? Because, friend, I want to tell you, Jesus is the answer for your life. He is the only answer. And somehow or other, I'm talking about that God has got to bring about a shift in the church where we're, where we're not just passively playing church, but somehow or other something begins to stir on the inside of us and we begin to rise up and we begin to make declarations. Our God reigns, hallelujah. You, you can say some words and you can sing some words and they've got power and they've got authority and they've got victory in them. My God reigns, hallelujah. My God is not a loser. My God is a winning God, hallelujah. And so you make a declaration. You speak to the mountains. You speak to those things. And, and though we're not there yet, but I believe that we, we're getting there. We're beginning to get there. We're beginning to change. There's a change. There's a change. There's a change. But we've got to contend earnestly. Jesus commanded the wind and the sea, peace be still, and it obeyed him. Jesus also said these words, and this is what you've got to build on. You've got to build your faith on certain things. You can't build it on, on hope. No, hope is good. Hope is the beginning. But you've got to build it on a solid foundation. And Jesus' words are that solid foundation. And whatever Jesus spoke, the power of God is in those words to bring it to pass. Only believe all things are possible. Jesus said these words to me and he said it to you. These things that I do, you shall do also. There is nothing is impossible. Nothing is too difficult. The, the problem that we've got to contend with, it, with is the way we think. And we think that I can't do it. We think that I'm not good enough that I... Blah, 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 blah. You've got to get rid of that sort of talking because your words will kill you. But if you start speaking the words of Jesus, you'll find life. You'll find power. You'll find victory. Jesus spoke to the demon-possessed man in Mark 5, 8. This demon-possessed man who had terrorized the city, naked, beard, spittle, filthy, mess. They chained him, but he broke the chains, pulled the chains asunder. A naked man. Jesus' words, words contain power. Your words, Jesus' words, he said, whatever I do, you can do also. He spoke to the man and he said, come out of him. 
And this demonic force came out of him. But in Mark 5, 8, it speaks about that this naked man is now made whole. This, this naked man now is clothed and in a sound mind. Mark 5.15 speaks about that he was clothed now in a sound mind. Where did the clothes come from? Where, where, where? Friend, we serve a Savior who is a supernatural Savior that is not limited by anything. He's not limited at all. He can do whatever he wants to do. Friend, my hope today, my hope today is that we would come just to Jesus. Come under Jesus. Give Him your life today. If you're here in this place today and you do not know Jesus, Jesus is your answer. This church is not your answer. Jesus is your answer. Jesus is the answer for the world today. And I say to you, come under Jesus. Give Him your life today. If you're going through situations, if you've got problems in your life, come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Let Him fill you. Let Him touch you. Oh, my friends, I believe that God is going to do amazing things in, in this nation, in this world. But I believe that He's calling people. He's calling those that know Him to come deeper, 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 deeper. Come closer, come closer, come closer. Get under the mantle. Get under the spout where the glory comes out. Get under the presence of God. Get under the anointing. Let the anointing touch your life. Let it touch you and get on the inside of you. It's the anointing that breaks the yoke. It's the anointing. God will lead us by His anointing. If you don't know Him, give Him your life today. If, if you're here today, let the King of glory come in. Let the King of glory come in. Don't just be a pew sitter. Get up off your blessed assurance and let the King of glory come in. Let there come a shout out of your mouth. Let there come praise and worship to the King. Take a step to one side. Get out of the mess. Go another way and come to Jesus. Amen. Give Him your life today. Don't give it to anybody else. Let Him be God. I, I hear this morning, and even when I was doing this message, the word refreshing. There's a lot of Christians today that need to be refreshed. A lot of people need to be refreshed. I remember Keith and Jenny used to come along once every six weeks. <laughs> and I'd say, you come for another shot. And they'd say, yeah. They come for a refreshing. Come for a refreshing. We need to be refreshed. We need to get under that spout. We need to get under the anointing. We get under the mantle, the presence of God. If you're here today, I pray that, that that anointing will touch you. That anointing will touch you. I want you just to bow your heads with me, if you would, today. If you're in this place today and, and you're not sure where you are with God, perhaps you've, you've gone away, perhaps you've slipped away, friend, you don't need me to tell you where you are today. You know where you are. I don't need to convince you today. You already know. I know where I stand today. But if you've slipped away, if you've never given your life to Christ, if you've never allowed the King of Glory to come in, or, or if you've slipped away but you say, God, I, I want the King of Glory to come back into my life. I want purpose. I, 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 want, I want the fullness. I, I want to know you. If that's you today, while our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed, I wonder if you could slip, quickly slip up your hand today. Not to me, but say, God, that's me today. I, I need that. God bless you, honey. Put it down. Anybody else, quickly slip it up. Slip it up right now. Slip it up. I see it. Put it down. Anybody else, quickly slip it up right now. You know where you stand today. You know what you need to do today. Quickly slip it up right now. I'm just going to wait one more time. One more, one more minute. One more second, rather. <laughs> Those ones that have raised your hand, would you just quickly stand to your feet for me, please? Don't be shy. That's great. Come on, don't, don't be shy. Just, I want you to slip out here. I want you to slip out the front with me. Just come out the front. So, come on, honey. You put, yeah, that's it. 
Just come and stand with me. Good on you. Bless you, honey. This, 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 this is a lady that's the first day in the Pentecostal church. <laughs> come over here, buddy. What's your name? Who? Todd. Bless you, Todd. Come over here, sweetie. Come over here. Amen. We're just going to pray. Would you put your hands towards these ones? Father, you know the state of their heart. So I want you to pray this out loud after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today and I surrender my life. Come in, fill me, forgive me, set me free. Jesus, you are the Son of God. You died for me and I thank you for that. You're my Savior. You're my Lord. Amen. Father, touch your Father by your Spirit. Let the power of God touch you. It's okay, you get used to it, mate, if you hang around. <laughs> Father, touch him. Touch him, Mark. I mean, touch him. Touch him, Father. Father, touch you today. Touch him. Touch him. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. I have never seen any of those three before in my life, to my knowledge. Thank you, Jesus. If you're struggling today, struggling with your faith, struggling if there's a trauma that you're going through, look to Jesus, friends. I'm just going to open this altar right now, and I believe that there's many that want to just need that touch, the refreshing touch, the touch, the touch, the touch. While I was uh, preparing this, I, I asked God, I said, God, give me some words of knowledge. I want to pray for some people just quickly. Uh, there's some people here who've got strained eyes. Uh, if you just want to quickly come, uh, there's, uh, there's somebody here that's got a throat condition. I don't understand it completely, but you got to just come, come on, come on quickly, come on out. Don't, don't wait. Uh, there's, there's somebody here and you've got a left hand condition. You've got a shooting pain going into that left hand. I want to pray with you today. I want to believe God with you. There's somebody else here with a left a shoulder, and uh, a left shoulder. That's not your shoulder. <laughs> a left left side. Amen. <laughs> your left side. God can use anybody. Let I can tell you that now. On your left side, uh, somebody here with a lower back, and oh, the, the left shoulder is there as well. Somebody with that condition in your left shoulder. So come on out, those ones, and let's pray with you. Don't be shy. Don't be. Uh, don't hold back. Because I believe the presence of God is in this house right now to touch you and set you free. Amen and amen. So you just look to Jesus. You lift that to him. Lift it to him. This is going to be your day, mate. This is your day. Loose him. Shakabundi. Release her. Release him from it in Jesus' name. Freedom. Be healed. Now. Yes. Grandma, don't fall out of a chair. Get <laughs> she's, she's, <laughs> she's in the pool swimming. Glory to God. She's in the river of God. That's where she is. Amen. Touch Graham in Jesus' name. Release her. Release her. Amen. Okay. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, loose him. Release him. Father, touch her now. Amen. Release it. Okay. Those that want that refreshing, would you quickly come now? And uh, hallelujah, coffee and cake will be served. <laughs> Amen. So quickly come. Come on, let's all stand to our feet. We're going to sing a song. Just come and let the presence of God, let the refreshing come over your life. Let the refreshing, 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 let the refreshing come. Oh, Father, let that refreshing fire, power, the anointing, the victory of Christ. Let the refresh touch him in Jesus' name. Father, let that refresh wash out, refresh him, take away all the strain. Hallelujah. That all the people that want refreshing? Man, there's going to be heaps, heaps here for me left. It's like you, Lord, in all the earth. <laughs> See what you don't, what you don't, what you don't take, I take home with me, and I get double, triple, quadruple.
But come on, get it while it's here. Amen. Let the fresh, refreshing fire. Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry. Let the refreshing, don't you? 